We are talking 4.1 today, and we're getting into what we call transformations. Okay, transformations, uh, another word for transforming or transformation is to change something. So we are changing the location of our figures in the chapter. Okay, changing the location. In the second half, we'll change the size as well. But uh, today we are talking specifically about translations. Translation and transformation get easily confused. Translation, we will talk about today. Transformation is like the whole chapter. Okay, but we'll get into specifically what a translation is in a couple minutes here. Uh, before we do that, let's get into our vocab because there was a lot. Okay, talking about vector, and yes, it's the guy from this big movie, this vector. This is probably why he was named that. Uh, but a vector is a quantity that has both direction and magnitude, which is just another word for size. So it's going to look like a line segment, but there's going to be an arrow on one end. So it's, it's similar to that directed line segment that we talked about, but it's even more so that direction, this, uh, this distance. Okay. So a vector is just going to look something like that. Okay, it's going to be an arrow. Okay, it's going to have, it's going to have a starting point. It's going to have an ending point. It's going to have a specific direction to it, and the size of that matters. Okay, this is going to be a different vector than this because it has a different length to it. So we're going to pay attention to all of those things. We're going to pay attention to where does it start, where does it end. We're going to pay attention to what direction is it heading and also how long is it. Okay? All of those things play a role in a vector. So if we look at our key idea here of a vector, okay? and this is going along with what we what I just talked about. You've got that initial point, which is your starting. That's the one without the arrow. You've got your terminal point. Terminal is ending. Well, is our ending point. So our terminal point is uh, the arrow. Uh, when we go to draw this, okay, the terminal point is the tip of the arrow. It's the end of the arrow. Okay, that is the terminal point. It is not where we have a starting point and an ending point, and then we extend that arrow on beyond it. We do not extend the arrow beyond that terminal point. It's not like we were graphing lines, okay? And we're gonna create a vector, that arrow is gonna stop right on that terminal point because length matters, right? It matters how long this vector is. Uh, when we write it, okay, we name it always like a ray, right? Because basically that's what it is, right? It's a ray, but we have that, we stop at the arrow instead of continuing on. We're going to name it very similar to the ray, and I know it's hard to see because it's pretty small there. Um, but what we would call this is PQ, and then just the top of the arrow. Okay, a ray is when you have the whole arrow, a vector is when you just have the top part. So, very, very similar. But you got to know when you see that symbol, we are talking about a vector. Okay, so we would say this is vector PQ. Initial point is always first, terminal point is always last. Always written left to right like that. Okay, and any vector that we have, and we are talking on the coordinate plane here, but we are talking distance and size and all of that. We talk about the vector, we talk about it in component form. Okay, component form is just breaking up how far left or right does it go, how far up or down does it go. Okay, so this right here, this would be our component form of the vector you see on the screen, five comma three. What that's telling us, that's telling us that we have a horizontal component of five and a vertical component of three. So from the initial point, we're going to the right five, we're going up three. If these numbers are negative, then we're going to the left and we're going down, okay? So you look at this, and this is going to tell you what that uh, what that vector is going to look like. 
You see, we started here. Doesn't matter where you start. They don't give us a starting point, right? It's not that it starts necessarily here on the graph. You don't see any numbers, no ordered pairs, right? No ordered pairs here. It's just in general, what is it doing? It's going five to the right, it's going three up. So it's going from here to here. Okay, if I had component form that looked like this, negative two comma one. Which tell the person next to you, what is that vector going to look like? Um, okay, what would that vector look like? How would you describe what's happening with that vector here? Ethan? There you go. So wherever you're starting from, and again, there's no starting, there, there's no ordered pairs here. So wherever we're starting from, we're going two to the left and one up. So our vector would be right there. This is that vector. Okay, with our component form negative two comma one. Tells us what direction, how far it's going. Any questions right now about our general idea of a vector? Yeah. Will the vector always start on um, start and end on an intersection? Or on an intersection with it? I you're saying like on a corner here? Yeah. Uh, it doesn't have to, to answer your question accurately. It doesn't have to, but we will start it on the points. Yeah. All right, so now let's see if we can go the other way. And I give you the vector and you give me the component form. So there's vector JK. Want the component form of that, please. Check somebody, did you guys say anything? Okay, Virginia, what is our component form here for JK? Jason? Three, four. Three, four. We go over three, we go up four. So that would be three, four. Now notice uh, when we have component form, this is different than an ordered pair, okay? And it's represented differently, okay? These are not parentheses. These are little arrow things. It's like a less than and a greater than type symbol, okay? So they will be represented differently in the book on big ideas, on the test. So when you see that angle, that angle parenthesis, this is what we're talking about. Okay, that's how we can tell it apart from just an order. All right, so let's get into really what we are dealing with this chapter, which is transformation. And we said transformation means to change something. Uh, so you should already have your definition down for transformation. Okay, it's a function that moves or changes a figure in some way to create a new figure. Okay, so we're moving, we're changing, and we're creating a new figure. Uh, the new figure, and these are important here, the image and the pre-image. The new figure that is created is both the image. The original figure is the pre-image. And a lot of times we'll mess this up, okay? But it's very important to know that the original is the pre-image. And the, uh, the picture after our transformation is called the image. So we go from the pre-image to the image. There is no such thing as post-image. So when you see that on the vocab section, please do not choose that because that is not a thing. Every year, I still have people choose post-image. Okay, I'm going to try to trick you by putting post-image on the vocab section. Don't choose that. Okay, that's what I'm talking about. So the original is pre-image, and then the new one is the image. Right, and that's going to hold true the entire chapter. 
All right, so we're looking today at translation. Now there's a lot of words, there's a lot of, you know, a picture here with a lot of things going on. So let's simplify it a little bit. Translation, we see the definition, it moves every point in a figure the same distance in the same direction. We used to call this a slide, right? If the translation is when we just take something, we slide it in one direction. <coughs> What's really happening here is we are using vectors to do this. We are taking every point, and, and the blue is the original here. Okay? It's just that line segment. We are taking every point on that line segment, and we are following the same vector to get it to the new point. Okay, whatever that vector is, over this amount, up this amount, over this amount, up this amount. It's the same vector that's pushing that figure up to the other one, okay? So that's what a translation is. It's following a vector, every single point following a vector to a new position. And we see that here, right? We're using that vector to go to the point. A couple things to point out here on the picture. Uh, we can tell which one is the pre-image and which one is the image by how they're labeled, okay? The image, the image is always gonna have this little one there, it's called a prime. So we would call that P prime and Q prime. That represents uh, the image. This prime tells me that I did a transformation. Okay, so the original, the pre-image does not have the prime, this is point P. I did a transformation, so I ended up at P prime. That's how we can tell from a picture if we've got the original, uh, the pre image, or the new one, which is the image. Okay. So that's what we're, we're looking at today our transformations. Okay. Now, uh, actually transforming things in the coordinate plane is pretty easy. Okay. And the Big idea is going to have you wrap it out, most likely. Uh, a lot of the time, anyway, not all the time, but they're going to have you graph it out. We don't have to graph it to be able to transform, to be able to translate. All we need to know is that vector. And so here, they give us a triangle. They give us three word pairs, A, B, and C. They ask us to translate A, B, C using the vector 5, comma, negative 1. Why don't you tell the person next to you, what do you think we're going to do with that vector and those order pairs? What do you think we're going to do? We're going to take the Okay, so what are we going to do? What are we going to do? Add the vector onto the Yeah, that's all we got to do. All right, let's take each ordered pair, add that vector onto it. So we're going to take each one here, we're going to add five. And subtract one in each order pair to get our new order pairs. Okay. How would you go ahead and find A prime, B prime, and C prime? Find our new order pair. Okay. Okay, what is our A prime going to be? Where's our A prime going to be after we add five to five? Five? Five comma two. Five comma two. Okay, add five, subtract one. How about B prime? Here, fit. Seven comma three. three. Thank you. And then C prime. Uh, yeah. Six comma nine. Six comma nine. There you go. So we're just following along that vector. Everything. Okay. 
right? Because we're moving every point in the same direction, the same distance, we're following that up. The other way that you might see this type of question is they're going to give you what's called a rule in arrow notation. A rule in arrow notation. You might want to have this down because they will ask you to create a rule in arrow notation. So you got to know what it is. A rule in arrow notation, and we're going to see this all chapter. It's going to look like this, where it says, all right, we're going to start with a general equate or general point, x comma y. Okay, x comma y, we are going to transform it. That arrow in arrow notation tells me it's a transformation. So my original point x, y is going to become, and then they would write this problem as x plus 5, y minus 1. This is telling us exactly what we're doing to every point. Whatever that point is, I'm going to add five onto the x value and then subtract one from the y value. So the same exact type of problem could give you the three ordered pairs and then say, here's your translation. What are the new points? Okay. And we would do the same exact thing, get the same exact answers. Okay. Just a different way to represent it. Okay. So we see that rule in arrow notation. I want you to create a rule on arrow notation now. Okay, so here's our, here are our pictures. Create the rule in arrow notation for this case. It always starts with a general x comma y. And that's what you're doing. Okay, talk to somebody about it. See what they got. So you've got the same thing. And if you don't agree with the person around you, figure out why. Talk to them. Give them a reason. Oh, All right, so Vision, what is our arrow notation going to look like? What do we have next to the X, next to Y here? Jackson? X minus four, Y plus one. That is correct. Yeah, I had some people going the other way. I had some people saying X plus four, Y minus one, which is incorrect. Somebody other than Jackson, tell me why is this correct? What's up? Yeah, the red one has the primes by it, right? Which means that's our image. This is our pre image. This is our image because we've got the prime. So we are going from R to R prime. So to do this, just to clarify, pick out two corresponding parts, R or points R and R prime or Q and Q prime, doesn't matter. And then just see what did we do to get there. Good. Questions on that? All right, last couple of things here uh, that we need to kind of touch on a little bit. This idea of a rigid motion. Okay, a rigid motion is just a transformation that doesn't change the size or the shape of the figure. Okay, the mathematical, the real definition, transformation that preserves length and angle measure. Okay, but we know what that means. It doesn't change the size or the shape. Okay, it stays the exact same. So when you go to do a translation, 
because our translation postulate tells us a translation is a rigid motion. You're not going to change the size or the shape of the figure. So when you go to translate a triangle that looks like this, your end result is going to be a triangle that looks the exact same, same size, same shape. Okay, it's not going to rotate on you today. It's not going to get bigger. It's not going to stretch one way or the other, right? So same exact shape, it's just moved, okay? So a rigid motion doesn't change. Another word for rigid motion is isometry. Okay, we might see that uh, thrown in there every once in a while. But uh, this is just telling us that everything is going to stay the same size, same shape. All right, and then here, here you can see, right, it's a rigid motion. All the angles stay the same, all the side lengths stay the same. Okay, nothing changes in terms of that, which we know, right? If, we're, if everything's following the same distance in the same uh, direction, then it's not going to change, right? It's going to stay the same. Here's our theorem for today composition theorem. Composition of two or more rigid motions is a rigid motion. That just means I can move it, I can translate this more than once, and it's still not going to change the size of the shape. And that's all I'm saying. Because you are going to see some compositions. Compositions just means we're doing more than one. And they're going to ask you to take this shape, they're going to ask you to translate it. Maybe we end up down here, and then they're going to ask you to translate it again. Maybe we end up here. Right? This is just telling us that it's going to stay in the same shape, even though it just doesn't look like it was my drawing. It's going to stay the same shape. Okay, same size, same shape. Right. Just moving location. All right. So, with that being said, let's try out a composition. Now it says to graph, you don't need to graph. I just want you to come up with the final ordered pairs here. Okay, what will the final ordered pairs be? Okay, talk to somebody, see what their final version is here. All right, so we're doing two different translations here. Now, for the end, okay, for the end result, our final position, it does not matter which of these goes first. Right? It does not matter which goes first for our final end result. Now, sometimes they might ask you, and you might need to find the middle result. So we need to get in the habit of doing the first things first. So we need to use, and you probably did that already. 
by doing whatever's listed first, do that transformation first. Then from there, we're going to do the second one. So we can kind of find that halfway point. So if I have the original R and S here, if I want to find R prime and S prime, I'm just going to follow this translation and add five, which is going to give me up to negative three. I'm going to subtract two. I'm going to add five, subtract two. All right, so there's R prime, S prime, which is after that first translation. Now from there, from there, from that halfway point, I'm going to do the second translation. Sometimes people, uh, for whatever reason, try to do it back from the original. Okay, we already did a translation. We're doing another one off of that. So now we would call this R double, sorry, R double prime and S double prime. Because now we did two transformations on it. Okay, this is showing us, we know the single prime is that halfway and then the double prime is gonna be our final. So now we're subtracting four, subtracting two. So that's negative seven comma one and negative five comma four. So that should be our final position. Negative seven one, negative five two. Any questions about that? What do you notice about taking these two and going from the original to here? Margaret? It's just if you add the uh, extra five to the extra four, it's would be one to three. And then what would the Y be? Yeah, so if we wanted to go from the original to the final, we know this is the vector that it followed, right? This is the arrow notation that it followed because we can just add those together and get there. So if they're just looking for the final, say, the final points, then yeah, we can add these together and go, all right, well, I'm just going to add one to that. Add these together, combine them, say, all right, I'm going to subtract four from the last. That's okay. We just got to be aware if they're asking for what are the halfway points or if they're just asking for what's the end. Okay. Be aware of that. All right. So that is, those are our translations. Okay. Any questions on translations for today? Okay. The next two sections before the quiz are going to deal with two more transformations uh, rotation and reflection. I think, refle yeah, reflection is. Tomorrow rotation is Monday, but that's what we're dealing with before the quiz are just these three different types of transformations. Okay. Got some stuff to copy down for tomorrow and for two, not a lot, but there is a little bit. Okay. Go ahead.